Good morning. Welcome to worship with us here at Calvary. We're so glad to have so many families joining us for this uh, very special day. My name is Sam Trammell. I am one of our pastors here at Calvary. We're going to be starting our service today off with a few announcements. So while we give those announcements, at the end of each pew or at the end of each row is a red fellowship pad. If you're on the end, if you could uh, pull that pad out and start filling in and pass that down the aisle, that way we can uh, make sure that we keep track of everybody who is here. So as we do that, a couple of announcements that we have. Mother's Day is coming up fast, May 8th. If you would like to show some love and appreciation to a mother in your life, our community garden team is going to be selling flowers that will be brought here to the church, and you can pick them up that weekend and then give them to that person. All of the money collected helps the, our community garden ministry. For all the details, you can look in your blue announcement sheet that was uh, placed on the table next to the bulletins. While you are looking in that blue announcement sheet, you'll probably notice that we've got a ton of Bible study ac uh, opportunities coming up. If you're uh, at this point where you're thinking, you know what, I would love to get into Scripture just a little bit more, and I would like to spend some time digging into Scripture with other people, if that's you, then please uh, check out all of those opportunities. We would love to have you join us for a Bible study. You're probably, probably noticing that today is a special day here at Calvary. We have 14 of our 8th grade confirmation students who are going to be confirmed. They have been studying God's word uh, for two years now, and they're going to have the opportunity to stand in front of us and confess the faith that they have in Jesus Christ. Uh, you'll probably notice that we had some pictures of these kids going before the service. We'll have those pictures playing after. The kids will be out in the lobby after the service. If you'd like to, uh, to stop by and congratulate them, uh, we certainly would welcome you to do that. That covers our announcements. At this time, we stand for our opening song. Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
not only do we gather in the name of our triune God, but any time the church gathers together, we are gathering together to confess who our God is, who our triune God is, and what our triune God has done for us. While we normally do that with a creed, today we're going to be having our band lead us in this confession through our next song. us to come fully in our confession of our sins as he welcomes us to come and rely upon his mercy. So before we finish our song, I invite you to bow your head and take a moment to confess of all the things that maybe have gone wrong in your week, the failures and mistakes that you have been carrying. And may we each come to him knowing that we will hear that assurance and of his forgiveness, knowing that God stands ready to offer his forgiveness. And so let us confess before our God. That God is good and in his mercy has given his son to die for you. And for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. By Jesus commanded by his authority. I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
this time the congregation can be seated and we invite forward our children for today's children's message. All right, good morning. Thank you guys for coming to our children's message. The first thing we have to talk about today is, what is this? An egg. What kind of egg? An Easter egg. That's right. Okay, so we're going, what do you do with these? You hide them, and then what do you do with them? And then you find them, hopefully, right? All right, so I was thinking, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. You guys ready for that? We're going to have a, a little Easter egg hunt. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're going to hide ten eggs, which means everybody's going to find one egg. So here in a minute, I'm going to ask you to first close your eyes and then take both your hands and cover your eyes just to make sure that there's no peeking, obviously. And then I'll tell you when you can open your eyes and you're going to go find one egg. And after you find one egg, then you're going to go back and sit in your seat. Are we ready for this? All right, we've got some additions. If you don't find an egg, then you're going to have to find, find with a partner because I think, I don't, I'm not sure if I have quite enough eggs. All right, so here we go. Close your eyes, cover your eyes. Okay, here we go. No peeking, Drew. Almost ready. Keep your eyes closed. I'm sorry, I'm hurrying. All right, how many eggs are you going to find? One. One. All right, on your mark, get set, go. There you go. All right, once you've got your egg, you can head back to your seat. All of the eggs are up front here. All of the eggs are right up here, so you don't have to go anywhere else. So once you have your egg, you can sit right back up here, right where we were. <laughs> All right, bud, you want to come take a seat with us? Did we find one? It's really looking. There we go. All right, let's have everybody come back to our seat. If you found an egg, awesome. If not, that's okay too. All right, now, when do we typically have an Easter egg hunt? Can you sit down for me, bud? Thank you. On Easter, is today Easter? No, but guess what? Easter is when we celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive, right? We celebrate that Jesus is alive, that he didn't just die on the cross, but he died on the cross, and then he came back to life and he burst out of the tomb on that third day. You know what? We can celebrate that every single day. We might not have an Easter egg hunt every day, but every day that we wake up, we can celebrate that Jesus is alive. So that's my hope and my prayer for you guys, that every single day, even if you don't have an Easter egg hunt, you would wake up and be able to celebrate and party and say, Jesus is alive. All right, we're going to fold our hands and pray, and we're going to do a repeat-after-me prayer, and you can take your eggs back to your seat with you. Dear Jesus, we are so happy that you are alive. Help us celebrate your life every day. Amen. All right, thank you for coming. You guys can go back to your seats. Our first reading today comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verses 14 through 17. Therefore hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. Before you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol, we have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through, 
it will not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. And I will make justice the line, and righteousness the plumb line, and hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 through 6. It says, So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. So we are officially one week removed from Easter. We did all of the Holy Week stuff, we did all of the Easter stuff, and now the question becomes, what's next? I mean, last week we did everything. During Holy Week we came together on Palm Sunday and, you know, we had the palm branches that were turned into crosses that, you know, we gave away to hopefully our, our neighbors or our friends or our family. And then a few days later we came back together on Monday Thursday and we received the Lord's Supper and the, we were in community with each other and we received Christ's forgiveness through that holy meal. And then we came back together on, on Good Friday and we were reminded of the, the death of Jesus on the cross, that he died for us. So we did all of the Holy Week stuff and then we did all of the Easter stuff, like the Easter, Easter stuff. You know, we, we came together and we, we decorated the sanctuary. We, uh, we put up new banners and we put flowers all around the altar. We filled the services with, with special music and special instruments. We came to church and we were, we were all dressed up a little bit more than normal. You know, the kids were down in the gym offering an Easter breakfast. Like, we did everything that we were supposed to do. So now what? Now, it's kind of a strange way to think about it, but Easter can sometimes be a little bit fleeting. You know, we've got this, this big build-up to Easter, and then we have this huge spiritual high point for the year, and then we ask that question of, what's next? And we, we kind of move on from it, and this spiritual high point that we have from Easter surely and steadily just kind of fades away back to our spiritual baseline. See, our, I think our faith is, is kind of like that, where you could almost envision, you know, the, the line or the trajectory of your faith almost like it was a graph, like you have high points and you have low points. And we have this, this spiritual baseline. So for me, you know, Easter is often a spiritual high point. Even as a kid, you know, we have spiritual high points. When I was a kid, I would have my spiritual baseline down here, and you'd, you'd be in January, and you'd get through the winter, and you'd get through the spring, and then you'd get to the summer, and boom, spiritual high point. You'd have a week away at a, at a Christian camp with all of your friends, and you've got these counselors that you look up to, and every chance they get, they're pouring the love of Jesus into you. It's a spiritual high point that week, but then the week does eventually come to an end, and you begin to make that slow descent back to your spiritual baseline. Now, why does this happen? Why does it seem like after every spiritual high point that we have, there's this slow and steady decline back to our spiritual baseline? I think it's important for us to ask the question, what makes a spiritual high point a high point for us? 
as a kid when I would go to camp for a week, it was just like the, the camp song said. It was Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, and Jesus when the sun goes down. You'd wake up and you'd have Bible study in the afternoon, you'd have prayer in the evening, you'd have campfire and devotions. It was all Jesus all the time. And if you tried to bring anything that wasn't of Jesus into your day, you had somebody who was going to hold you accountable. If you were trying to gossip, if you, were, if you were being hateful or something like that, somebody would hold you accountable until you got back to the point where it was all Jesus all the time. And when you have these high points, when you're in that moment, you think, man, this is great. Like, I, I'm just so full of Jesus right now. And you ask, what, what do I have to do in order to keep this thing up? What do I have to do in order to take this spiritual high point and turn it not into a high point, but turn this high point into my new baseline? And so you make all sorts of goals and commitments, and you tell yourself things like, man, this, this week has been so great. I've been spending so much time in God's Word. I've been spending so much time in prayer. And so you make goals, and you say, every single day I'm going to do something like read a, at least one chapter of Scripture, and I'm going to spend at least five minutes in prayer. But then as time goes on, your commitment to these goals, at least in my experience, it begins to go away as time marches on. So after a month, it turns into, well, let's see, let's see what I can get done in five minutes. After two months, it come, turns into, well, I'm at least going to pray before every meal. I'm going to pray before I go to bed. After three months, it turns into, I don't even know where my Bible is right now. See, that's that spiritual descent that we're talking about, going from this spiritual high point back to your spiritual baseline. Now, we are here together for worship, right? And we've got this special thing where we're going to have the kids uh, confessing their, their faith to us and being confirmed and as, as members into our church. And as we were getting ready for this day, we let our 14 confirmads pick the text for the day. And they chose 1 Peter 2, 1 through 6. And in this text... Peter gives a really simple solution. He says, hey, if you're trying to take a spiritual high point and turn it into your new spiritual norm, here are some things that you should be doing. And here is what Peter says. He says, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure, the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. And as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. So here's Peter's advice. He says, if you like being built up into Christ, if Jesus all the time works for you, keep doing those things. Continue to chase after all of those things. He says, put away all the other junk. Put away all of the hate. Put away all of the envy. Put away all of the slander. Put away all of the deceit. Don't build your life on those things. Don't build your spiritual house on those things. Build your life in your spiritual house on Jesus and remove everything else. Now, Peter, he uses two metaphors to help us understand this. The first one is he talks about spiritual milk. What is spiritual milk? Have you ever noticed, as an adult, if you have any kind of like bodily problem, there seems to be a solution to it. It's always the same solution. Oh, you, you, you need to drink more water. Whatever your problem is, you, you just need to drink more water. If you wake up in the morning and you're having a hard time, you know, getting yourself started, somebody will probably tell you, hey, as soon as you wake up, the thing that you got to do is you got to drink a full glass of water. That'll just get you going. Or maybe you're getting into your afternoon and you're starting to feel a little bit cranky and you're starting to get a headache. What do people tell you whenever you have a headache? Oh, you just need to drink some more water. You're dehydrated. It seems like water is the answer to every problem that we have as adults. And if that's the case, here's the question. Why do we give babies bottles of milk and not bottles of water? If water is the answer to everything, why do we give babies milk instead of water? Because milk has everything that a baby needs in order to grow and to be strong and to be healthy. So what Peter is saying is you have to go after all of the things that help your, your faith to be strong and to grow 
and to be healthy. Don't fill your stomach with things that are only going to fill your stomach and not help you. Chase after the things that make your faith strong and grow and be healthy. The second metaphor that Peter uses is this idea of a spiritual house. And in this house, Jesus is the living stone. It says the stone rejected by men but precious in the sight of God, right? That's kind of the story that we, we all went through last week during Holy Week, that Jesus is the one who's rejected but still precious to God. And he is the one who we are supposed to be building our house on. Now, this idea of building a house, it's very reminiscent of another piece of scripture, which we find in Matthew chapter 7. It's the parable of the wise and the foolish builder. Here's what Matthew tells us. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. So do you want to maintain the spiritual high point that you're coming off of after Easter? Do you want to take that spiritual high point that you have after Easter and turn it into your spiritual baseline? Do you want to keep things going in that way? Then Peter says you have to continue to build your life on Jesus, not just on Easter, but every single day after Easter. Because if you build your life on all these other things, if you build your life on the hate and hypocrisy and envy and the slander, then the rain is going to fall, the winds are going to blow and beat against your spiritual house, and your spiritual house is going to fall. And you're going to have that descent from your spiritual high point all the way back down to your spiritual baseline. Now that's a pretty clear picture of what it looks like when we get this wrong. It's a pretty clear picture, and I think we've all experience that. You've had this spiritual high point. You think, I got to keep this thing going, and then time goes on, and it just kind of slips and fades away. We've all experienced this, I think. But what if, what if that's not how it goes from here on out? What if you get this right? What if you take the words and the encouragement of Peter, and you build on Jesus every single day? Peter tells us that when we do that, when we build on Jesus, not just on Easter, but every single day, we become built into this spiritual house that Jesus is. Now, that's a very kind of abstract idea. But let's put it this way. You know that feeling that you have when you've been working all day long? You've been at work or you've been at school. You've run all of your errands afterward. You've gone and gotten all of your groceries. Maybe you've I've been running kids back and forth to, to practices. You get home, you, you make dinner for everybody, and then everything is done. And you're able to just sit and be, and be at peace knowing that everything that had to be done is done and you are 100% confident that everything is just the way that it's supposed to be. You know that feeling of peace and that feeling of confidence? When we build our life on Jesus every single day. That feeling of peace and confidence becomes ours. So again, we are one week removed from Easter. We did everything that we were supposed to do. We did all the Holy Week stuff. We did all the Easter stuff. And before we ask the question of what's next, maybe we should ask the question of what was it all for? Why did we do all of those things? Why did Jesus do all of these things that brought us together last week? Why did Jesus go into Jerusalem knowing that it would be the place where he would die? Why did Jesus gather the disciples and wash their feet and then institute his Lord's Supper even though he knew that it would be such a long time before he was able to participate in that meal in the same way again? Why did Jesus carry his cross up to the hill to receive a punishment that he did not deserve? Why did Jesus do all of these things? Jesus did all of these things for you. 
to show that he is the only rock worth building on, to show that he is the only foundation worth building on, not just on Easter, but every single day, to show us that when we build our life on him, that feeling of peace and confidence, knowing that everything that needs to be done is done, that feeling becomes ours. Not because of anything that we did, but because of everything that he did for you. Now, for you confirmation kids, you've spent the last two years learning about Jesus and asking yourself if, if he is really the foundation that you want to build your life on. You've spent time in scripture, you've spent time in prayer, you've spent time in study, you've spent time in conversation, and today you're going to have the opportunity to express if Jesus is really the foundation that you plan to build your whole life on, not just today, but every day. And my hope and prayer for, for each one of you, eighth graders and, and everybody here as well, is that every single day we would be building our life on Jesus, the one living stone worth building our life on, so that we would receive the peace and the confidence that comes only from building on him. So with that, we go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for sending Jesus, the living stone. We thank you for sending him so that we could build our life not on anything or anyone else, but that we could build our life on him so that we could receive peace through him, so that we could receive hope and confidence through him. Lord, we know that when we build on Jesus, the rain can fall and the floods can rise up and the wind can blow and beat on our spiritual house, but when our house is built on your son Jesus, we are able to have peace. Help us every single day to build our life on your son. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
we stand for prayer. That let us pray for all people according to their needs. We pray for children and infants, that they be raised by faithful parents and guardians and grow in strength and in knowledge of the Lord. We pray for those in power, especially elected officials, that they would treat those under their power with justice and compassion. We pray for the elderly and homebound, that God would strengthen them through his word and sacraments. We pray for the leaders of this congregation, that God would send his guidance and wisdom for the benefit of this church and community. We pray for those who are sick, recovering, and seeking God's help with the pains of life, especially Shelby Wagner Cooper, Bailey, the daughter of a friend of Sarah Shrout, for Susie Stainbook and Paul Dorman, who are preparing for surgery, for Lawrence Monroe, recovering from surgery, and for so many others in our prayers, either listed or in our hearts today, that they would find, in the, that they would find themselves relying fully on that all-sufficient grace of Christ. We pray for those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially the family and friends of Jay Kling and John David Stevens, that they would find hope in the resurrection and the return of Christ, and we pray for those who celebrate special occasions and answered prayers, that their joy may be a witness to the goodness of God. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your power, mercy, and grace as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite our our confirmants to remain standing. The congregation may be seated at this time. Is it beloved in the Lord? Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Is that you have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding, Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what we now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you, this day in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts which God gave you in your baptism? And at this time, as we ask our questions, of our, our credal questions, we invite the congregation to also join in with that shared confession of faith. Do you be- renounce the devil, all his works, and all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And at this time, we return to the questions for our confirmands. Do you believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, and do you confess that the teaching of the Lutheran Church, taken from the Bible and expressed in the small catechism, is true? Do you intend to live according to the word of God, to be faithful in worship and the use of God's word and sacraments, and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? 
I do. Do you intend to continue steadfast in the confession of Christian faith and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? That we rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord, that you have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, may he who began this good work in you, that he will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This time, if you are a parent of one of our confirmation students, we ask you to stand. Your children will need your continued guidance. Therefore, I ask you, do you promise to continue to pray for, support, and encourage your child in word, in deed, and in example? If you're standing, we ask you to continue to stand. If you are a sponsor or a godparent of one of our confirmation students, we ask you to stand. You were chosen to serve as sponsors for these young people when they were baptized. Through the years, you have remembered them in your prayers and fostered them in their faith. They, however, still need your continued encouragement. Therefore, I ask you, do you promise to continue to encourage, strengthen, and pray for these students that they may continue to grow in their Christian faith? At this point, we ask the entire congregation to please stand. The promises made by these students, parents, and sponsors are difficult to fulfill. They need God's help and a congregation's support. Do you this day give your promise before God to help these young Christians and their families fulfill their promises? We do by the grace of God. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing your sons and daughters to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Help them to continue steadfast in Christ to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, the congregation may be seated as we uh, provide those blessings for each of our confirmations. Said Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Aidan Matthew Francis the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower his, uh, his service in your name. Give him trust in every trial and patience in any suffering, and preserve him in everlasting life. Aidan's confirmation verse is Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That Aidan received this cross to remind you of that very fact that he has marked you as his own and will continue to walk with you always. Amen. That Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Carter Michael Gaskins that your heavenly grace that he may continue in your word and ways, daily increase in, your Holy, in him your Holy Spirit, to live by you in faith, serve with love your Son, and come to your everlasting kingdom with all the saints. Carter's confirmation verse is Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Say, Carter, our Lord has called you to follow him and to take up your cross. May you in all things continue to seek after him all your days. Amen. Said, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Caleb Matthew Hudson your eternal power. Let your, heavenly, your fatherly hand be over him and your spirit work mightily within him. Lead him in the knowledge of your word 
and obedience to your will so that he may serve you faithfully in this life and dwell with you forever in the life to come with Christ and all the saints. Caleb's verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So may this cross ever remind you of that good news of John 3.16, that Christ has died for you and given you his grace. Said Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Kyle Jeffrey Huntington the fruits of your living spirit. Give him courage, patience, and a vision for your kingdom work. Uphold his life unto the day that you bring him into everlasting joy with Christ and all believers. Kyle's verse is 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 15. But as for you, continue what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and know from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Say, Kyle, our Lord has given up all so that he might make you his own. May this cross ever remind you of his faithfulness to his promises. Said, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Nevin Ramsey Jeffers a zeal for knowing you. Strengthen him as a witness to Christ and a follower of the gospel in every daily duty. Sustain him daily by your love, guiding him every, each and every day of his life in your peace. Nevin's confirmation verse is 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise you for your youth. But set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. That Nevin, may our Lord continue to journey with you in all of your days, and may his very grace continue to remind you of his deep love. Said, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jackson Thomas Jeffers the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of knowledge and wisdom, of grace and prayer, of power and courage, of purity and obedience to God, preserving him blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jackson's verse is 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly for my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So Jackson received this cross as that reminder that he has given to you his grace and his promises and will never forsake you. Amen. That, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Hayden Michael Langhammer the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him for service in your name. Give him trust in every trial and patience in any suffering, and preserve him in everlasting life. Hayden's verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That Hayden Christ has given himself for you, and may he continue to be faithful to his promises all the days of your life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Celeste Isabella Lee your heavenly grace that she may continue in your word and ways, daily increase in your Holy Spirit, live by faith in you, serve with love through your Son, and come to your everlasting kingdom with all the saints. Celeste verse is Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Said Celeste, receive this cross as a reminder of his promises to you, and may you continue to walk faithfully with him always. And may you go with his peace.
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ethan Thomas McWilliams your eternal power. Let your fatherly hand be over him and your spirit work mightily within him. Lead him in the knowledge of your word and obedience to your will, so that he may serve you fully in his life and dwell with you forever in the life to come, with Christ and all the saints. Ethan's verses, Joshua 1, 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So did Ethan receive this cross as that continual reminder that he will walk with you in all of your days. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Dylan Alexander Minor the fruits of your living spirit. Give him courage, patience, and vision for your kingdom work. Uphold his life unto the day you bring him into everlasting joy with Christ and all the believers. Dylan's confirmation verses Luke 1, 37, for nothing is impossible with God. So Dylan, our Lord, has given you his promises, and in all things he will remain faithful. And so go with his very peace. Amen. Hold on to that one. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Lauren Calipolium the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of knowledge and wisdom, of grace and prayer, of power and courage, of purity and obedience to God, preserving her blameless until the coming of your Lord Jesus Christ. Lauren's verse is Psalm 46, verse 5. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. So as our Lord has marked you with his cross and baptism, so also he has marked you as his child, that he will always go with you. And so may you go with his very grace and forgiveness. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Caitlin Jazine Royer a zeal for knowing you. Strengthen her as a witness to Christ and a follower of the gospel in every daily duty. Sustain her daily by your love, guiding her each day of her life in your peace. Caitlin's verse is Hebrews 13, 5. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Katie, may our Lord continue to work in you all of the promises that he has given to you in that very cross of Jesus, and may he walk with you always. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Juliana Stratton the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her for the service in your name. Give her trust in every trial and patience in any suffering and preserve her in everlasting life. Juliana's confirmation verse is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That Juliana received this cross as that very reminder that our Lord has called you to come and find your rest in him alone. And may he grant to you that peace all of your days. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Gavin Michael Wagner your heavenly grace that he may continue in your word and ways. Daily increase in your Holy Spirit, live by faith in you, serve with love through your Son, and come to your everlasting kingdom with all the saints. His verse is Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God will be with you forever, wherever you go. So Gavin received this cross as that very reminder that you are called to take up that cross and follow him in that faithfulness in all of your days. And so may he send you always with his very grace and peace.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is forgiven for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Declare who you are. I'm 
Sing of how great
We pray. Jesus, thank you for your victory over sin and death. Fill our hearts with the joy of the forgiveness that you have shared with us in this meal. Unite us as the people of God, sending us from this place refreshed and renewed for the week ahead. Amen. And now may the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Before we sing our final song, we do just want to give a, a, a reminder. First off, thank you so much for joining us for worship. Our confirmation students will be out in the lobby if you'd like to stop by and congratulate them. And now we sing our final song.